Ambassador Nides, thank you so much for spending a few minutes. First of all, I understand this is your first uh, media interview, TV interview at least, since uh, the Israeli elections. And I wanted to save it for you. Well, that's very kind. And do I also understand this is your first interview as ambassador with any Christian media? I think that's right. I'm sure, I'm sure there's been uh, individual reporters I've spoken to, obviously, yeah. right, for uh, Christian uh, um, uh, reports and okay. newspapers, but generally this is well, the first one it. and my first, and I met with you, as you know, well, I, a couple I, months ago just yeah. to get to know you, so thank you very much. Well, that apparently didn't dissuade you from no, it didn't, uh, sitting exactly. down. Thank you. All right, so let's get started. First of all, just a quick little bit of background. I'll I'll do some bio for you before we uh, before the, uh, the interview rolls, but uh, we got a spate of Jewish ambassadors have come from, but very different ambassadors, very different ideologies, backgrounds, religious sensibilities. Just give us a quick sense of who you are. What, what do evangelicals need to know about you as an ambassador and, and as, from a Jewish background? Well, I'm, uh, thank you very much. First of all, I'm glad to be here on the show. I heard it's doing very well. So congratulations. So far, so good. Um, listen, I'm a Jewish kid from uh, Minnesota. Yeah. Uh, I grew up the youngest of eight kids. Uh, my parents were, uh, ref as we would like to refer to, as reformed Jews. Uh, my father was the head of the UGA, president of the temple. My mother was head of sisterhood in Adassa. We were cultural Jews, you know? Went to temple a couple times a year. We lit the candles on a Friday night. I grew up being a Jew. I grew up about being about a community and giving back. That's how I interpret being Jewish. I came to Israel for the first time when I was 14. 14, really? And wow. I just, I, I fell in love with not only the country, as one would do, but what it stands for and what it's important to not only Christians, and not only Jews, uh, but Muslims and Arabs and Palestinians and those right. who live in Israel. So I just, it is the melting pot uh, of everywhere. And so, you know, I'm, uh, uh, there have been obviously more religious Jews than I who have had this job, uh, but probably um, I could put myself in a category of caring deeply about this place like any ambassador, Jewish or non-Jewish. That have been here. Good. Well, I I enjoyed meeting you, and I and, and yes, I, and I obviously know David Friedman and Dan Shapiro, some of your your predecessors, um, and I've been intrigued to getting to know each one of them and their their love for America, but their their love for Israel and the desire to build this relationship. It's it's a complicated relationship, and so you come at an interesting time, but you also come not as a career foreign service person. You're really in in, in venture capital, private equity, uh, banking. Uh, but also as uh, with, with diplomatic experience. You were Deputy Secretary of State under President Obama, and now here you are, uh, President Biden's point man, at a very interesting time. So we've got to get into the issues. Um, let's just start. You just had a phone call uh, with Prime, Prime Minister-elect uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, and President Biden just had that call um, just within 24 hours of this interview uh, taping. So what did you say? What did the President say? Where are we this, with this relationship? Because uh, there's been a lot of criticism of the, of the, the new coalition that it looks like Netanyahu is going to need to build. Uh, and we can get into those specifics. But just where, how did the calls go? Listen, I, first of all, I've known uh, the Prime Minister Netanyahu for a long time. Certainly not as long as Joe Biden has known him, I assure you. Uh, and I've had many, many conversations with him before he got uh, just elected. Hey, listen, I, it was very friendly. Um, I obviously have... Uh, a deep sense of this is a guy who cares deeply about the state of Israel, cares about the Jewish people, cares about the bilateral relationship with the United States. No question about that. Uh, President Biden's conversation with him, which was last night, uh, they have known each other for almost 40 years. Yeah, it's amazing. And he made it very clear to uh, the prime minister they want to work together with him. Uh, they want to strengthen and continue to strengthen this unbreakable ties between our two countries. And we'll work very closely with uh, this government as it's formed and work with them on the issues that, that bind us together. So um, as, I liked, as I said uh, to one of uh, Netanyahu's advisors this, uh, this morning, I said, first call, pretty good, huh? <laughs> and so I, I feel good about uh, where we are today. Obviously, this is a work in progress. We'll see how the government folds uh, and folds as it relates to who, who gets picked and how things come together. Uh, but this is important to us. This is an unbreakable bond between our two countries. We've got to make sure this is a democracy. We've got to, we've got to embrace democracy, huge voter turnout, which Israelis should be proud of. So yes, I'm part of that. Highest in, in, in 20 years. Yeah, it's, it's great. Listen, I, and so I'm, you know, I'm here in the seat. I want my but job to be Democracy is messy. And, uh, in both countries, by the way. In both countries, that is true. <laughs> We've certainly seen that in recent days. So 
One question is, of course, this new uh, party that has risen, uh, religious, religious Zionism party. Uh, Betzalel, Smotrich, uh, Itamar, Ben Gavir. These are names that have, um, okay, so they have the legitimate right to run, and this is a democracy, and, and, and there they are with 14 seats. But most major American Jewish organizations and pro-Israel organizations have condemned them as racist, as anti-Arab, as anti, uh, as extremists. So there have been reports um, that Secretary of State Blinken, whom you're close with, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, also you're close with, aren't gonna, be, aren't gonna interact with these guys, but they may be cabinet members. So where are we with, with how, how are you guys going to handle as an administration uh, uh, some highly controversial to say the least uh, figures. Well, first of all, let's. We, we, I'm not going to speculate who uh, the prime minister decides to put in his cabinet or not, and nor am I going to uh, uh, right now today suggest who we'll meet with and who we won't meet with. Okay. Um, I want to. We want to play this out. Uh, my job as the American ambassador is to calm things down, to make sure people understand there's an unbreakable bond between our two countries. We have clear views of clear things that we will, we will articulate to whoever's in those seats. Don't make any mistake about that. Okay. But right now, my job is to talk about what binds us together, to support the democracy of, of the, as you just pointed out, the probably a hugely um, successful election that they had in Israel as in runs of people that showed up. Both Arabs and Israelis across the board showed up. So until I know exactly what this government is going to look like, who has which positions, what the positions they take once they get into government, sometimes there's difference in some of the positions they take when they run for campaigns. We have the same problem in our country. On occasions, people say things on the campaign trail, and then they say different things when they actually have leadership positions. Let's see. Okay. My job today, keep things calm, keep things focused on this unbreakable bond that we have between our two countries. Okay, I'm getting the theme, unbreakable bond. So you were recently in Washington with Israeli President Herzog uh, and President Biden. How, take us inside that room. How did that, really, how did that conversation go um, and, and, and what were the highlights? First of all, I love Bougie Herzog, okay? Uh, he is what every president should be of this great country. He, is, he understands America. He loves Israel, as you know. His brother is the ambassador. Yes, I his know. Father his father was the president. Well, and his, his father was president. His grandfather was the chief <laughs> rabbi. He represents... This is a founding family. He, he represents what's beautiful about this country. He helps to be my personal friend. Uh, he and Joe Biden are two peas in the pod. They just <laughs> bounded together. You know, he talked about the, the success of the, of the Lebanon uh, negotiations that just got done, were very important. He obviously talked about the threats as opposed to Iran, as Israel's view are. He talked about a little bit about the elections without getting into specifics. Um, it was very warm. I then went with uh, 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 Herzog to see uh, Tony Blinken and to Jake Sullivan. And so we, you know, he, he knows all these people. I mean, uh, 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 President Herzog is a player in Washington. He knows people and people know him. He, and Why so was he invited though? Like it's an interesting moment. Um, is, there, is there a specific issue that's no. Boiling, bubbling, or no? It was. It was. Please say, it was good for President Herzog to be in the Oval Office for Amer for Israelis to see how close that relationship is, and it's good for Joe Biden to be with President Herzog. Remember, Joe Biden is the guy who got off that airplane just a couple months ago and looked into the TV cameras and says, "You Here know in what? Israel. In Israel, you do not have to be a Jew to be a Zionist." And so the reality of this is. Joe Biden believes us in his core. This guy has been dealing with Israel and the love of this place for 40 years. He's been here 10 times. So this is not like a made up meeting or a good for the photo ops or good to get you know, more voters. No, this is who Joe Biden is as a person. He cares deeply about this relationship. He cared deeply about being close to not only Prime Minister Bennett and Prime Minister Lapid yes. and Golden Myer and President and uh, President Herzog. So the reality of this is he's uh, has been uh, has a career of knowing and caring about Israel. So the, me the meeting was great. Uh, it was beautiful. It was warm, uh, and we loved having him. Okay, good. All right. So uh, let's take Golden Myer for a second because this really does go back to. Uh, then first term Senator Biden coming over, I think 1972, 73, uh, maybe it was after the uh, right Yom Kippur yeah. War. Uh, that's an extraordinary history of 50 years of, of relations with 
basically every single prime minister. Um, but you know that most evangelical Christians uh, are not um, politically, ideologically aligned with the president. But you also know when we had coffee, I said, listen, uh, there's an enormous amount of criticism of Biden um, among evangelicals. But one of the points I have made, uh, both on the All Israel News uh, that we write and in this new TV show, is in the world of the Democratic Party, Biden shines as one of, if not the best, on Israel. And there are a number of issues that I think, uh, look, I, I, one of the things that I criticize journalists about is I don't mind if you criticize a position, uh, you know, a policy, whatever. But I don't want to think that the, the media hates this person. You know, it's like football. I don't want to think that you, that somebody hates the the, the Steelers because my fam wife family originally is from Pittsburgh. And like, okay, if you think a play is bad, they're obviously doing terrible this year. Fine, you you, you can call that. But I don't want to think you want my team to burn in hell. Mm. But a lot of journalism, that is the feeling. So I think it's important. Why don't you take a moment, if would you, and just make the case of the things that Biden has done that at least evangelicals should know, whatever else they think, and we'll talk about some of the disagreement points, and Iran be one of them, um, but I think it's important to be fair that Biden has actually been very strongly pro-Israel in a, in, a, in a party that has some people that aren't so pro-Israel. Um, you know, so it's a great and question. You're, and it, your job is to make the case. It's a great question. It. So the great question. So I... One thing about your viewers who are watching tonight, they know what's in their heart, okay? You know, politicians come and go and they have positions and not positions, but you can look into someone's kind of soul and say, you know, do I, do I feel on the issue of Israel, per se? Does, is he faking it? Does he believe in it? I, I sat with this guy when he got on one knee at Yad Vashem and held the hands of those two Holocaust survivors, these beautiful women, okay? And, 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 he, and, and you could see tears coming down the president's face. He sat there on his knees for 20 minutes talking about the connection, the humanity, what happened during the Holocaust, why Israel is so important, why it's so important not only to the Jews, to the non-Jews. This is who this guy is. This is who this guy is. You can't, you can, one thing about uh, age, one thing about age is good and bad. But when you when you when you are of of the of the authenticity that Joe Biden that's how he got elected he's authentic okay you may not like him but he's authentic okay and he, and he in his in his beliefs in his soul he believes in this place that it's important for it for not to be a homeland uh, for the Jewish people for a lot of reasons but also the importance for it to keep this this place safe and secure and be and feel good for Christians and Jews and Arabs and everyone to come together for into this place called Israel. And so I think, you know, again, I, I wouldn't work for him if I didn't feel that. I still wouldn't be the ambassador to Israel, right? I don't need this job for my next job. As you point out, I've had a career both in business and in um, uh, and in uh, uh, in politics or in government. Um, I just fundamentally believe that your viewers and, and people who don't watch your show, I will, will expand, I'm sure, over time, they saw him here. Mm -hmm. You saw this guy and how he spent you know, 48 hours and the fact that it's his 10th visit and understand what he cares about. And I think um, my case to, to people is um, when he said you do not have to be a Jew to be a Zionist, that's true for many of your viewers, if not a lot of your viewers, yeah, who believe... Yeah in Zionism for, for what it is. And so again, I'm, uh, I think he makes the case for himself. I don't need to make the case personally, but you know, I, um, I just looked at that vision and saw his, in his eyes and, and how he thinks about uh, this country. Um, he's a guy who cares. So some of those issues that I have appreciated, and again, don't see, I don't want eye to eye, to, uh, eye, to eye with him on a number of issues, but. But his support of Iron Dome funding has been huge. My life has been saved. My family's life has literally been under the uh, Iron Dome as it's, and, and, uh, as it's been uh, fired and protecting uh, Israeli citizens and other foreigners and uh, people here. Um, and it was President ba Obama and Vice President Biden at that time who really pushed that through. And, uh, and, and oh, by the way, now it just, it's not just the Iron Dome. It's the 10-year MOU of $3.8 billion a year 
for the state of Israel. Which so was 10 a years. Record amount. Yeah. Record right. amount, but it was like, and you just you took the issue off the table. As a guy who used to work on Capitol Hill, right. I knew how controversial each time every year it was. It was. We always had the support, but you had to work it and you had to do it. Right. And they took that off the table. And that was amidst years. a lot of acrimony. Obviously. Totally. Netanyahu and Obama, you were 100%. right at the middle of that. Yes. Uh, I would say one other that I think is important for our viewers to, to hear in the F 35s, the most advanced stealth fighter jet ever built. Uh, and, the Ameri- and it was the Obama-Biden administration that sold them. Uh, I mean, it took a while to, yeah, I think they arrived mostly in the Trump years, but they were uh, approved uh, early I on. I think some planes arrived again this week, too. Just okay, oh, good. Probably just broke news. All right, well, that's, the same, but that's, that's all right. good. Well, please tell. <laughs> all right. However, right, the, one of the, the, the key word I learned when I came here and uh, started learning Hebrew, that my hor- Hebrew's terrible, is aval. However, but, but <laughs> so... Iran, let me start with, I think that if there's one issue that, that summarizes the, the, the concerns of evangelicals, okay, um, they pray for President Obama, or sorry, then did, uh, but now President Biden, because he's the president, we're commanded by the, in the New Testament to pray for our leaders, no matter whether we voted for them or not. And of course, there wasn't voting back in the Roman era. So, uh, <laughs> if only. Uh, but I think there's no other issue that n- makes even Juggles who love, and Jews who love Israel, all people who love Israel, more nervous than, than the Iran threat. So let me start with this question. Um, are you able to assure us now that this Iran 2.0 deal, is this now off the table 100% or is it just delayed until the midterms are over and we sort of both countries re-examine it? Uh, it's a great question. So I, uh, I'll step back for a second. Joe Biden has been very clear very clear. He is not going to stand by and let Iran obtain a nuclear weapon. Again, stand by and to allow him, them to get a nuclear weapon. He also was very clear that the conditions that needed to be met by the Iranians if we were going to re-engage in the, what we refer to as the JCPOA, right? The, the 2.0, as you said. Uh, this, they have not been met, okay? Not only have they not been met, but things have gotten even worse. Because the Iranians, if you believe the news reports, have not only been sending uh, drones to Russia, which by all stretch of the imagination is terrible, beyond but terrible. But not covered by a deal. But, but, but again, certainly made it much more difficult for us to have a conversation with them about their actions. Right. Okay? So my, my view today, we are nowhere close to having a deal with the Iran, uh, and, and Joe Biden has said that. He told that to, to President Herzog. Um, we have, and again, as you probably know, because you've been reporting on it, the, the activities that are going on in Iran today, um, vis-a-vis the protests and the fighting on the streets, um, obviously, you know, we, we are obviously uh, applaud uh, people for expressing uh, their views uh, in any country that we are engaged in a, in a quote, process. Um, so I'm not, I'm not, put this way, I'm not sitting around waiting for the call that we've re-engaged or are signed up for the JCPOA. I will be clear, though, the president has said many times, would we like to have a diplomatic answer to the, con- the conflict in Iran? You and I talked about this in our office. The answer is, of course we will. Are we close to having that done? The answer is no. But the deal is not off the table. If, if, no, if the Iranians are willing to re-engage... Um, There's there, no nothing's ever off the table. Why, why would you? Why, your your viewers wouldn't want us to say under no it, circumstances. It, it, under no circumstances are we ever going to cut a deal and try to s- stop this nuclear program. If I told you that, you'd be looking at me like what? No, uh, so so, I, so, so I, yes, the so answer is the, the point, yeah. Yes. The point of agreement is is do we want a diplomatic solution as opposed to war? There's no there's no debate about that. Right. But let's talk about what some Democrats are saying about this particular deal, which is making people so nervous. So if you have uh, some Democratic congressman, uh, 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 Josh Gettheimer, for example, we interviewed him um, at the- Josh is my friend. Well, good. So so he could not be a more faithful Democrat, but he is dead set against the specifics of this deal. He doesn't want it to be re-engaged. He's like, this should be withdrawn. And he was pretty adamant with us about that. I would also, also uh, give you an example of Dennis Ross. Uh, Dennis, uh, of course, a uh, senior advisor. Also a very good friend of mine. Good, um, yeah, and uh, me as well. Um, and he's made it crystal clear this deal doesn't actually stop Iran from getting the bomb. So what it would do is remove economic sanctions. 
So I add one more other point and then I, and then for you to respond, but there are a number of Democrats who say, it's not the idea of negotiating with Iran, it's the idea of this formulation where it doesn't prevent Iran from getting the bomb, but it does open the floodgates of economic uh, uh, activity where Foundation for the Defense of Democracies uh, put out a, st a study this, uh, this fall, $275 billion in economic input into Iran in the first year, a trillion potentially, if, and if, if that's not if oil prices go up, 1.4 trillion by 2030. So this makes people who say, okay, there's no question Biden loves Israel. You can disagree on the two-state solution or you know this particular thing or that, particular, but how can you say you love Israel and potentially give or open the door to a trillion dollars to a terrorist regime. So this is making people nervous. And it's not just Republicans, it's not just evangelicals. That's why I wanna- uh, Yeah, get, no, get, get Joel, let, Joel, let me just be clear. I, I, there is no question um, that there are concerns among Democrats and Republicans, Jews and Christians alike, okay? Uh, we, we, Joe Biden would say that. There's, there's no, there would be no, if we ever got back in deal, there's no, there's never a perfect deal per se, okay? Uh, and, I, and it's legitimate. The, there's no question that if in, a, in a, any kind of, um, quote, deal that the Iranians would get uh, money, and we un certainly understand the anxiety that people have. Here's the deal. There is no deal at this point, okay? And I, obviously, uh, we are, feel very strongly, as, as the president has said, that we will not stand by to let the, the Iranians get a nuclear weapon. We would like to have it done by diplomatic terms. We would like to have it done by diplomatic terms, as I think most of your viewers would, okay? But every opportunity and every option is on the table, okay? So I, we, are, uh, we are committed to the security of the state of Israel. We are committed to the security of the state of Israel. And I think Joe Biden, you can see this in his eyes. Uh, so listen, at the end of the day, uh, we'll play this uh, through uh, and as I said a moment ago, I, I'm not holding my breath for any negotiation with the Iranians in this current form, and, and I'm certainly respectful of people's views. I'm holding my breath, and I, many evangelicals are holding a breath that, that we want that deal off the table, and uh, it makes us nervous. Not the concept of diplomacy, but of the specifics. Well, I'll add one more thing, and I think, you know, it's, it's been interesting to watch, and I've gotten to know, so I know Netanyahu, I know Lapid, I know Gantz, um, and a number of the others. Lapid took a very different approach than Netanyahu. I think policy-wise, they're pretty similar. And, but Israeli uh, public opinion, but Israeli political opinion is 100% against this deal. Yeah. Uh, the, the Mossad chief, uh, in a rare uh, spoke, uh, statement, said it was a strategic disaster for Israel. So, but Lapid's pr approach was, let's, look, let's try to work quietly, respectfully, mostly behind the scenes until late in the game. And then he started to come out publicly. Netanyahu, we'll see, but hi historically that has not been his case. I was, I was, at the, uh, I was in the, the House chamber when he gave his famous speech. Um, and so was I. Were you? Okay, well that was, quite a, that was quite a speech and there was quite a reaction from the Obama-Biden team at the time. Um, I don't, uh, so, but, but I want to add one more piece, and that is, so since you and I first uh, sat down for coffee, I've been to Bahrain, UAE, Morocco, and I've met with Saudi, top Saudi leaders as well, not in Saudi at that time, but they're nervous. You know this. It's not just an Israeli, hey, an Israeli-American thing. The, the Arab world is very worried, and it's not just, so that's what I want you to respond to. Okay, you've made your case on, on the deal, but also, they do not believe that there is a credible military threat on the table. That, that, so, and Dennis Ross, going back to your friend and mine, he says if there isn't a absolutely crystal clear military threat, you can't get the Iranians, you might not be able to get them there, there anyway. So, so setting aside the deal, what about the, the posture right now of, um, because I think, People are nervous that what if, and, and the talk is, as you've, you've heard it in the last few days, if, is Netanyahu going to think, I, I'm alone, I, I love Joe Biden, but I might have to go do this by myself. Uh, and none of us want to see a war. 
Okay, so let me ask, look, there's a couple bunch of questions. Yeah, I know. I'll just, so, I'll, I'll just so answer. Feel, feel free to I'll, I'll just, so, but, Let me first of all. But dealing um, with that feedback. Let me, well, let me first of all, let me just say, um, uh, Prime Minister Lapine and Prime Minister Bennett, okay, before him, were very clear on their opposition to the deal. So there's, everyone has a different style, right? Bennett had one style, Lapine had one style, Netanyahu had one style. It's fine. They, they feel strongly and have felt strongly um, that we should not be in negotiations uh, with the Iranians. They also understand, and if you believe what you read, in the newspaper that the Iranians are very close to break out, okay? Yeah. Very close to break Some out. Some have said that so, okay? two days away. So, okay, they're very close to break out. And again, um, that is a threat to the state of Israel. Make no mistake. So and to the United States. Okay, without question. So how you deal with that threat is very important. What I will say to you again and again and again, okay? Joe Biden has said he will not allow the Iranians to obtain a nuclear weapon, number one. And number two, all options are on the table. We are not going to articulate what we're going to do. Joe Biden doesn't do that, by the way, nor did other presidents before them. Uh, we've been steadfast in our belief that we have Israel's back, okay? We're steadfast that we have the back of the Jewish people about the threats that are here, and we understand those threats. We understand, that we understand the threat of Hezbollah and what's going on with Hamas. We understand what goes on in Syria we're very well aware of what the impacts of all of this are. And so Israel knows that. They know the cooperation here between the Defense Department and the IDF and the security forces. I said this to you when you're in my office. It's like I didn't, I knew it intellectually. But I'm glad you're putting it on the record. I, 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 I knew I it. Tell people I, what you told I knew, me. I knew it in I knew it intellectually, but to see it, it's like it's a family. We're connected. We understand uh, the threats. We understand uh, the positions. We, we get it, okay? We, we're not naive to what's going on in the region. We're not naive to what the anxieties that the Saudis have vis-a-vis -vis Iran. We're not naive in what's happening here. We are very focused on it. We're focused on it every day. And I think we, we care deeply to make sure we've got Israel's security, we've got Israel's back, and we're focused on it uh, every day. Okay. All right. You made your case. I appreciate it. So the Saudis, you just brought them up. Wow. One of the most contentious relationships I've seen between the United States and an ally has been uh, the Biden administration, President Biden's personal relationship uh, with the Saudis and particularly um, his, his uh, deep concerns about uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. I've had the opportunity to spend many, many, many hours with uh, MBS um, I actually do believe, without betraying confidence, my, my perception is the Saudis do want to make peace with Israel. And um, one of the questions, things that you and I have discussed uh, before, but let's talk about it on the record. I actually think the main way, uh, one of the biggest foreign policy wins that President Biden could achieve would be brokering an historic Saudi-Israeli deal. Uh, but, the, but the trip didn't seem to go so well. At least the aftermath is that prices of oil are going up. So where are we and how can the president move that ball forward given there's a lot of complexities? But this, is a real, this would be a huge, huge deal uh, for the world and certainly for the president. I, I think if Joe Biden was sitting in this chair, he would look at the camera and say, one of the reasons I went to Saudi Arabia, one of the main reasons I went to Saudi Arabia, probably one of the most significant reasons I went to Saudi Arabia, was because of this place, because of Israel. He fundamentally believes the importance of the Abraham Accords. He has embraced the Abraham Accords sure. as if his, they're his own, right? And I have, as you know, Which every is the day. Which only point of agreement well, with President Trump. Yeah, but it president. just, I mean, the reality is we care. We thought the Abraham Accords made Israel a safer place, right? Morocco, Bahrain, the Emirates, obviously, let's not forget Jordan and Egypt, yeah. that, that, that this makes this place a stronger place. And I will I assure you, if Joe Biden was here, he would say, listen, Joe, would I love a normalization between the Saudis and the Israelis? Of course we would. It would not only be great for Israel, it would be great for the Saudis, it would be great for the region. So we're to work tirelessly with the Israelis and the Saudis. that's possible in the next two years? And, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I absolutely think it's possible. Who, you know, you never know how these things place out. Uh, and I think ultimately that's what's important to us. What's important is about the security in the region, the security for the state of Israel. And would we like it? Sure, we'd like it. And we will work uh, tirelessly to achieve it. Thank you. Ambassador, I am very grateful for you coming on to the TBN show and talking to Christian media and talking to us first after the- uh, First place I went, right? That's where you go. Thank you very much, Joel. God bless you. We're yeah, praying for you. Thank you very much. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> I, 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 all right, me too. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you.